Hey guys, what's up? So I'm working on this 2013 F-150 here from Texas. So the thing is absolutely rust free. It's absolutely beautiful. It's immaculate inside and out. It looks like it just rolled off the showroom floor. It's so perfect inside and out. And it's really got me aggravated. Um, so I, I just wanna make a video about this real quick because I wanted you guys thoughts on this kind of stuff like this. So these EcoBoost engines, He's in for a timing job. The first thing I got a problem with is he's in for a timing job at 70,000 miles because the startup, you know, the startup chain rattle and phaser rattle uh, is it's happening pretty consistently now, 24 hours, 48 hours. It's happening just about every time at 70,000 miles. Okay, come on down, put the latest Ford parts on there. We'll fix you up. In here, starting to pull it apart. I need to go down below now, so I raised it up. So I can drain the coolant and stuff like that and get it some more stuff apart down below. And sure enough, just about every common problem and or leak with this vehicle is happening to it. And it really bothers me. Uh, I don't even wanna say anything to the customer, but I feel I need to. He came here to get the truck right and he doesn't know about these other leaks and problems, but they're all very common and he has every one of them. And it's gonna be me working through the weekend now, but if he wants it done, I'll get it done for him. Um, so I, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna show you all the leaks and, and stuff like that. And it, it's just really irking me right now that a customer that takes care of their vehicle so well has to deal with this kind of expense at 70,000 miles on a vehicle. Um, so anyways, leave your comments down below after you watch this video and, and see everything on here. Um, some of these vehicles that come in, like I said, the EcoBoost vehicles can either go one way or another, They're really troublesome and constantly breaking down, or they can go two or three or thousand miles and everybody just changes the oil in them. So it's, it's really like a hit and miss type thing. So let's go ahead and look underneath there. I'm gonna show you everything I found underneath there just by raising it up and looking at a few common spots on there. Remember this vehicle only has 70,000 miles on it, it's 2013. All right, let's take a look. So like I said, this vehicle is from Texas, has around 70,000 miles on it, and it's immaculate inside and out. I mean, the guy really takes care of it. He brought it in just for a timing job. Uh, so what I do when any customer comes in from especially out of state, far away distances like Texas or California, especially, um, I'll do a quick walk underneath the vehicle here, check for any kind of road damage that may have happened traveling up here, because remember they need to drive back with the same vehicle. Uh, so I'll make sure there's nothing that happened while they're on the road, check for leaks that may have developed on the road, stuff like that. It's a real quick thing I do. So everything looked good to go, even the bulkhead sleeve is nice and dry. Uh, so I came back to the vehicle, uh, to the front of the vehicle here by the engine and start pulling off some shields on here. And sure enough, look at all the freaking leaks on here. Everything's just soaked. Uh, so I came over here and I noticed the sway bar on here has coolant all on it. Uh, and I looked at the, the coupler for the front drive shaft. You can see it has coolant drippage on there. So obviously it's probably the turbo. So I look up and sure enough, we'll zoom in. Yep, there it is. And it's all coming from that fitting right there. So that's where it's all coming from. The problem is it's buried and you need to pull the turbo off uh, just to get in there and change that one fitting. And of course, when you're in there, you should be changing all the bolts, gaskets, and all the fittings in there. And a lot of times you change the tubes on there also. So it can get quite expensive. I think it's nine hours labor for both sides. Uh, See, so look at this side over here. Let's check this side since the other side's leaking. And sure enough, look at that. I mean, it's leaking just as bad from that same fitting over there. I know you can't see it. Let me try to get you in there. It's hard to see the starter in the way. But that side's leaking just as bad. Okay. Okay. So we're looking at all this. Well, in 2013s, they went to a manual vacuum pump that attaches to the back side of the head. And yes, they are common to leak also. So you look at this one right here. And there it is. That's the back side of the pump right there. You see it? And it's just, it's leaking oil pretty bad. It's like one of the worst ones that I've ever seen. Usually there's moisture, maybe a drip. This one's pretty wet. Okay, now it's getting expensive. So I drain the oil and stuff like that. I'm looking around underneath here. And I'm looking on this side, make sure the water pump and everything else is good to go on here. They're not too common, right? Uh, there's some questionable staining on the tubes right here. You see them right here? Let me zoom in for you right there. Questionable staining, could be just be dust from Texas though. 
Uh, so then the other thing I looked at on here, just to see if it was leaking, I'm changing it anyways, is the, the uh, right there, if we can get a, there we go. That is the degas bottle quick connect hose. You can kind of see it there. Sure enough, that sucker's leaking too. But that gets changed no matter what uh, with timing jobs. So he's good to go there. But I mean, it just leaks everywhere on this vehicle. And of course, he has all the usual, you know, cat tube leaks from the the uh, the rubber couplings or silicone hoses. You know, they all get a little bit of boost leakage past them, and they start leaking on there. Not a huge deal, a little bit of moisture on them is normal, uh, but some of them are pretty wet too. So uh, yeah, it's just it, one thing after another on here. And he, all he do is come for a timing job because it, it has started having the problem of a startup rattle, you know, and it's happening a little too often for him. And I find all the rest of this stuff going on underneath here. So I don't know, it just irks me big time, especially because this customer obviously takes care of his vehicles very very well and he's still having to deal with all his expenses now either he fixes it or he just monitors his coolant level i don't know uh, i've seen these lines leak pretty bad once they get like this uh, where you can lose coolant pretty fast right now it's just forming drips but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below that's all for now i need to get back to this timing job and maybe some turbo coolant lines too we'll see but wait, there's more. So I'm pulling apart the front end here, and sure enough, the water pump is leaking on here. Look at that, from the shaft seal on there. It's been happening for a while. It's getting a new water pump too. Yeah, big, big bill. No good, right doggies?